Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing another $1,000 build guide featuring the GTX 1070 and i5-6600K. If this video reaches over 100 likes, I will be doing another build guide, but in a very special matter, wearing this horse mask. So without further ado, hit that like button if you wanna see that happen and check our social media links and let's get right into the video. Let's roll that intro. All right guys, so let's get right into this build. First off, the CPU. I chose the i5-6600K from Intel. It's a quad-core processor on the Skylake platform and has a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz. Now this CPU is great for gaming. You could opt for the i7-6700K, but really i7s are meant for multi-threaded applications like video editing, 3D rendering, and that sort of stuff. It's awesome for gaming, don't get me wrong, but the i5-6600K does the job for gaming at a much lower price tag, a good $100 cheaper, and really can do those other things as well that the i7 can do, but mainly it does a great job in gaming and gives you a hundred bucks that you can put elsewhere in the build. So I really do recommend recommend you pick up an i5, but if you are going to be doing YouTube videos or any sort of 3D work, maybe you want to opt for that 6700K and cut back elsewhere in the build. But for this build, I chose the i5-6600K, coming in at a price tag of $219.99. Now we gotta pick up something to cool this bad boy. So we picked up the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master, legendary cooler coming in at a very budget price tag of $24.89. It's a very affordable cooler and does the job very well. We probably could be able to overclock this i5 to around the four gigahertz or higher range using this cooler to crank out some more performance out of that i5. So there's no going wrong picking up the Hyper 212 Evo and that is why I got it for this build. As for the motherboard, I picked up the ASRock Z170 Pro Gaming Motherboard. It's on the LGA 1151 socket, so it fits your i5 nice and snug, and it has a red color scheme to it. Supports up to 64 gigs of RAM for expandability, and really just looks nice. And coming in at a price tag of $147.98, it really does the job for the build. It's in the mid-range price tier of motherboards, which is where you wanna go at this price range. And it does the job. It's a motherboard, has all the features you need, and really there's nothing wrong with it. So I definitely recommend you pick it up for this build. As for RAM, I decided to opt for G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series RAM, 16 gigs of it, two 8 gig dims at DDR4 3000 megahertz. So the main reason I picked up 16 gigs is mainly people who are Chrome tab hungry and like to stream really should benefit from 16 gigs of RAM. You can cut cost for like $30 and pick up 8 gigs of RAM, but since 16 gigs is so cheap and I'm basically getting the 16 gigs of RAM for $64, which back in the day, maybe like even a year ago or less than that, that's how much 8 gigs of RAM was. So you gotta understand, prices are really good on RAM right now and going for 16 gigs is honestly an easy option to go for. So I had 16 gigs to this budget because it's only $30 more, but if you wanna get the price tag down to right about $1,000, you can go with eight gigabytes of RAM and you will be fine for gaming. Eight gigs is plenty for games, but there are some titles that really are getting close to maxing out that eight gig limit. So I would recommend 16 gigs if you're gonna be gaming a lot and or doing some streaming on the side. Now for the storage, I basically did the same configuration I always do. I picked up the Silicon Power S60 120 gigabyte SSD. This SSD is going to be great for the boot drive. We'll do fine for main applications. You can opt for a higher gigabyte model, but 120 seems to be fine. I have a 120 gigabyte Silicon Power SSD in my system and I've had no issues at all. I'm kind of running out of space, but really I don't need that much more. So I'm about at 30 gigs left and that's pretty much fine for me. I have everything I need to install my video editing software, Windows, that sort of stuff. So the SSD in this build will do awesome. And then for mass storage, I just went with a Western digital caviar blue drive, one terabyte. It's a hard drive. You can offer something bigger if you want more storage for more games, if you think you're gonna max out a terabyte. Uh, but I mean, it's one terabyte. It should do the job for the build. And both of those together, it's about $47 for the hard drive and $34 for the SSD. So storage is taken care of at under $100. At the time of making this video, the GTX 1070 is totally sold out. It just released this morning and totally sold out. I and mean, people are already reselling it for crazy, ridiculous amounts of prices. So I really do not recommend you pick it up right now. But I do recommend if you want a gaming card to pick up the GTX 1070 and pick it up with a reference cooler, which would be a 
around the price range of $379 as advertised. That's only based on advertisements and speculation. I don't know specifics yet, but I really do recommend you hold out for a 1070 to come out with a reference design and get it for around $379 or $400. Around that price range, we'll be able to fit in the budget, but that's what I recommend for this build, a GTX 1070. If you want to know more about it, check out all the reviews on YouTube. There's tons of them. The GTX 1070 is going to be a really solid card for this build. As for the case, I chose the NZXT S340, very solid case at $64.95. It's red and black, has a side panel window, will look really cool to show off the case. You can also pick up some LED strips if you want to for really cheap, around 17 or so bucks, and make it look really clean on the inside, but this case is really good. NZXT makes very solid cases, and I highly recommend it for this build. And last, but certainly not least, the power supply, which is the EVGA Supernova Nex 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply coming at a price tag at $74.99. It's fully modular, so your cable management game will be A1, and it does the job for powering the system. So overall, this build comes in at a price tag of $1,000.47. And as I said, if you want to get lower to the $1,000 price range, drop the RAM to from 16 gigs to 8 gigs, and that will allow you to get the most bang for your buck and get the $1,000 price range. So again, thank you all for watching this video. If you haven't already, leave a like. If you dislike this video, leave a dislike. Comment down below. Check out all our social media links, and be sure to use our Amazon affiliate code whenever you buy stuff on Amazon. It really helps us out a ton. All that's in the description below, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this and continue to support the channel. And I thank you guys again for watching this video, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out, guys.